Hello friends, welcome to Inside Second Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about asymmetric federalism. First, we will go through the syllabus mapping, then the video components. After that, we will discuss more in I mean more regarding this particular topic. First, let us see regarding the syllabus mapping. This particular content is related to general studies paper 2 that is Indian polity and governance of course in constitution. Then the video components. First, we will discuss why it is in news. First, you have to understand why this asymmetric federalism is in news nowadays recently. Okay, Because the reason is when article 370, when article 370 was subjected to judicial review, when Supreme Court was going through the article 370, Supreme Court made certain comments that article 370 was not a part of India's sovereignty. It is just a feature of asymmetric federalism and it is a temporary provision. So that means it can be uh, abrogated at any point of time. In, this, in that context, Supreme Court specifically mentioned about the asymmetric federalism. Then we will discuss about what is this asymmetric federalism and why India has this asymmetric federalism. Then how the UTs are having at asymmetric federalism with respect to states. Asymmetric federalism is I mean, reflected in the form of Article 370, Article 371 and the 6th schedule. After that, we will discuss about so some of the arguments in favor of the asymmetric federalism and arguments against the asymmetric federalism. So these are the topic we are going to discuss in today's video. First, let me explain you the concept. You have to understand students first, what is the federalism? What is the federalism? Federalism is all about relationship between the union government and the respective federal units. Okay, union government and the relationship between respective federal units. This you have to understand. Now, in India, of course, there are unequal distribution of powers between the union government and state government. Unequal power distribution, obviously. Okay, in India, we follow the quasi-federal government. That means central government tend to have more powers compared to states. This kind of quasi-federal feature that means federal federalism with unitary basis. Federalism with unitary basis. We borrowed from which country? Comment your answer. Okay. Okay. So federalism with unitary basis. We borrowed this kind of feature from which country? Now there is, there is a difference between the union government and state government. This is the vertical difference. Okay? Not only the vertical asymmetric federalism we are having, even there is a lot of difference between the state to state also. There is a lot of difference between the state to state. For example, recently Jammu Kashmir, up to recent times, it was having special status under Article 370. And various states in India, Article 371A to Article 371 I, okay, through these various provisions, different states are having different special provisions. And tell me students, Karnataka is also having special status under which clause of the Article 371, okay, under which article, I mean, which clause of Article 371, Karnataka is having special status, okay, put your answer in the comment section. And finally, there are certain, some states in the sixth schedule, in the sixth schedule, so this is the horizontal asymmetric federalism. That means the asymmetric federalism among the states. This is the vertical asymmetric federalism. That means asymmetric federalism between the union as well as state. Not only that, even there is already vertical asymmetric federalism between the union as well as the UTs. Among the UTs also, among the UTs also, UTs which are having assemblies such as Puducherry and Delhi, they are also different. Okay. In Puducherry, with respect to Puducherry, the assembly of Puducherry, they can make laws on the state list as well as the concurrent list. Whereas regarding the Delhi, they can make laws on the union, I mean state list, but except on the matters of law and order, public, okay. So public order, police and land administration. That means among the UTs with assemblies, among the UTs with assemblies also, there is some kind of asymmetric federalism. So, from this concept, you must understand that there are two different types of asymmetric federalism in India. One is vertical asymmetric federalism, the other one is the horizontal asymmetric federalism. I hope you understood. Now, we are going to discuss about why we had this feature, that means asymmetric federalism. Why some states, they keep on 
having this asymmetric federalism why it has been there since so many decades and what are the arguments which are supporting asymmetric federalism and arguments against asymmetric federalism those are the topics we are going to discuss in this video now let us look at the why it is in news like we discussed earlier supreme court while commenting on article 370 supreme court observed that article 370 is just a feature of asymmetric federalism it is not an integral part of the sovereignty of the nation that means article 370 can be abrogated or that provisions can be taken away easily next asymmetric federalism asymmetric federalism is unequal distribution of powers it may be in the form of the vertical or it may be in the form of the horizontal so this kind of asymmetric federalism is mainly to cater unity and diversity in india different regions have different distinctiveness in terms of culture in terms of the backwardness in terms of the geographical you know like uh, features as well so to cater this unity and diversity of course they have to be treated it in different manner in that way this asymmetric federalism concept got originated next why india is following this asymmetric federalism because of the differences in local historical and geographical contexts next uts uts also there are differences among different uts i given already example regarding the puducherry and delhi even though these two uts are having their own assembly in spite of that they are having own their differences next in terms of states okay among the states first one is jammu kashmir it used to be stand out because jammu kashmir was given a complete asymmetric federalism in the form of article 370 by the virtue of article 370 jammu kashmir was entitled to have their own constitution in their constitution they used to have article 35a according to article 35a of the jammu kashmir only jammu kashmir permanent residents they can buy the property outsiders they cannot buy even because of the article 370 jammu kashmir can have separate constitution they have separate flag even their assembly duration is also 6 years and the laws made by the parliament they are not automatically applicable to jammu kashmir these kind of special provisions are enjoyed by the jammu kashmir because of the article 370 it is one form of asymmetric federalism next article 371 article 371 given asymmetric federalism to various states and article 371 is having uh, sub clauses from article 371a to article 371 i up to that okay different clauses providing special provision to different states for example uh, this article 371 providing special provisions to vidarbha region in maharashtra as well as regions such as saurashtra kutch and some other areas of in gujarat okay article 371 a to article 371 h after that also that article 371 i article 371 j those are the two articles which are dealing with special provisions related to goa and karnataka this is the second type of asymmetric federalism and the third one is sixth schedule you know the students in india especially there are few states where high high percentage of tribal population is there regarding this we have two schedules schedule 5 schedule 6 schedule 5 deals with administration of scheduled and tribal areas in general tell me students how many states in india consist of scheduled areas put your answer in the comment section then schedule 6 it deals with the administration of assam meghalaya tripura okay to administrate the tribal areas in these particular states assam meghalaya tripura mizoram they are given a special provision such as having autonomous district council that means these states they can have autonomous district council because of the autonomous district council they can have their own laws okay they can uh, have certain kind of autonomy this is also one type of asymmetric federalism okay in terms of as autonomous district council assam is having karbi anglong autonomous council dima hasavo autonomous district council bodo land territorial council and these are some of the autonomous district council in relation to assam such kind of autonomous district councils are already pres- also present in meghalaya tripura and mizoram as well so this is also one form of asymmetric federalism next here as an aspirant you have to know what is the difference between the special status and special category special status through special status a, set, a state can enjoy a special political as well as administrative rights whereas because of the special category special category state will enjoy only financial privileges that means special category is very narrow 
in term in, in comparison to the special status special status is a very broad in nature okay and it will give a lot of leverage to the state that we have to understand and to get the special status parliament in both the houses they have to pass a law with special majority with two by third majority in the both the houses whereas to give the special category that kind of strict enforcement is not required simply with the recommendation of ndc national development council with the recommendation they can give the special category that means special category status is more or less is an executive action it can be given very easily so these fundamental differences you should able to understand next we will discuss arguments in favor of special status so people who are supporting the special status they are arguing by saying these things such as historically different places are having injustices so that can be undone only through this kind of special status and preserving cultural and regional identity okay different places in india they are having different cultural as well as regional identity that can be okay appreciated by giving special status third one is promoting regional development that means backward areas their development can be promoted by giving more focus and ensuring local autonomy like in the case of schedule 6 those states tribal areas they given autonomous uh, council and with the help of autonomous district council they got certain kind of autonomy that can be possible only with special status and and the next one is facilitating integration so by giving this kind of special status over the period of time you can win the confidence among the people so that it will facilitate the national integration now let's see against arguments against special category okay against first one is it is harm to national unity okay because of this special status uniform laws are not applicable it may be harmful with respect to national unity and administrative complexity when different areas are having different laws it may also leads to administrative complexity naturally and inequality among different states because of this dif different state I mean, treatment it may also encourage the regionalism okay because of their excessive separate separatedness and political parties may misuse in the form of you know like even though certain areas certain regions even though they don't require any special status for political gains they may start demand for this kind of special status category and it may also stop the economic development we have seen this kind of thing with respect to jammu kashmir especially when article 35a was enforced in the jammu kashmir these are the critical comments against the special status what is the way forward the way forward is okay we have to balance both the developmental aspective as well as the national unity by balancing these wherever required okay in those areas special status should be given and we should take all the safeguards in such a manner that the special status should not be misused so this is the way forward now let's see yesterday's video questions which of the following statements are correct one war external aggression internal disturbance and armed rebellion are the grounds for proclamation of emergency okay correct one not the internal disturbance we remove that words armed rebellion replaced with war no actual existence of one or more grounds mentioned in article 352 is necessary for proclaiming emergency it is also not correct it is article 356 the president proclamation emergency on the basis of any ground mentioned in article 352 are possibility to that s yes. okay this one is the right one regarding the you know like article 352 that is national emergency next consider the following statement regarding the antarctic treaty the antarctic treaty was signed in washington on 1st december 1949 no students it prohibits the nuclear explosion and disposal of radioactive waste of course right and it also not allow the antarctic region to be useful to be used for any military purpose next why was daniel berenboim awarded the indira gandhi peace um, indira gandhi prize for peace and disarmament of course for their contribution for the peace and understanding between the israel and arab world next consider the following statement regarding the rail kaushal vikas yojana this is about it was launched by indian railways to provide technical skill training to youth across different industry relevant trades fine all the individual trains under the scheme will get preferential treatment for jobs within the indian railways this preferential treatment was not mentioned so only one st first statement is right that is a 
only one. Next one. With reference to the Bharat New Car Assessment Program, that is NCAP, it is an indigenous star rating system for crash testing cars, right? It is applicable to all classes of passenger vehicle, not all classes, wrong. The cost of the car for assessment are bound by the respective vehicle manufacturer, right? Only two statements are right, so answer is B, two statements. Now today's video question. With respect to the Finance Commission, consider the following statement. Read these two statements and pick the right one. Main's question. What are the key reasons behind certain states in India being granted special provisions under the Indian Constitution? That means reasons. And how do these provisions impact their governance? That means how the special status is impacting the governance and socio-economic development of the states. This is the main's question. As we reach the end of this video, let us do quick revision. In this video, we discussed about special status and asymmetric federalism related to special status. Different types of asymmetric federalism, vertical as well as the horizontal. Then we discussed about different types of states, Article 370, Article 371 and 6th Schedule. And we discussed about arguments in favor and arguments which are critical to what is the special status. And this is the detailed analysis regarding the special status and asymmetric federalism. Thank you.